doing is one that I wrote in response to uh, the BP oil spill of several months ago, uh, and it's entitled The Loss of La Belle, Louisiana. I think of all the still moments I have spent watching the sunlight as it glints, glistens on the water, your loveliness res reflected in the sky above, the haunting music of the birds, egrets, brown cranes, and, and pelicans as they glide overhead, the soul-sweet melodious cry of the loons cruising over the water, seeking the delicacies beneath your surface, tree roots sunk too deep to measure in swampy marshlands mimicking dry land, hiding flat-bottomed houseboats and gators patiently waiting for their prey. Now you are no more, your wondrous beauty befouled by greed, your loveliness spoiled for decades to come as black gold rushes from beneath the sea floor, a wave of darkness engulfing the delicate balance of your natural beauty, lives and livelihoods lost in the reckless pursuit of wealth. Raped and rent like a virgin befouled, ruined before her wedding day. Where are your supporters? Where are the concerts, the celebrities? Where is the concern for you? You are bereft and left alone to slob through the mire tainting you, sorrowfully watching eyes devour your plight, yet leave you to find solace without aid. Now Louisiana is tainted forevermore. She is drowning beneath a flood of black dripping despair and heartless unconcern. La Belle Louisiane, n'est pas plus. Mm -hmm. and I'm only going to read two poems that I selected to. I'm actually on my way back home uh, when I'm finished here. But this poem was written, um, it actually appears in my, uh, my master's thesis, and there's a story that goes along with it. It is entitled Black Gal. People always called her that black gal. She had the most magnificent skin, an ebony darkness that seemed to swallow light. I could never tell if they called her that out of envy or anger. I only know that she was the most beautiful person I'd ever seen in my life. She seemed to, be to, she seemed to me to be everything I wanted to be most, regal, proud, and glorious. It wasn't until much later that I understood that the title black gal wasn't one to take pride in. I often wonder where she is now, if you can still see the reflection of our proud African heritage in her stance and in her eyes. Those eyes that looked as if they could see all the way into you, old eyes that remembered we were once queens and princes of the earth. Black Gal was, I discovered later, what my mother and the other women on our block called a hoe. I wonder if that was a role she chose or if it was thrust upon her because of her incredible beauty. Black gal always seemed to be the topic of someone else's conversation. It was as if they were trying to live their lives through her. She was the epitome of their desires, stuck inside their tired nine to five lives, helping out their numerous children, while black gal seemed to sing and dance her way through life. It is the height of irony that black gal was never one of us, though she was. <coughs> you could see our ancestry written in the sinuous lines of her body the shape and angle of her flesh, womanly and well-defined, that made men look twice and women set their teeth. Black y'all never had a real name. The stigma of blackness followed her because she was too dark to pass and too proud to beg. Thank you.